here as we get set to resume play in the second half. This snow front that has socked much of the East Coast not going away as we are back to it in the second half. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Out come the Eagles now as they'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you turn that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try to hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. See if they do just that. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A gain of 13. It's a first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. On play action, Wentz, and down he goes. They bring down Wentz on the sack. Give the sack to Aaron Lynch, the former USF Bull. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Eight yards here, so that gets him back within striking distance. And now it's third down. From the gun, it's Wins. It's caught by Jackson. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 42. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence. When in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. Back in the end zone. Could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. This is Clement, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Mike spot nine, Mike spot nine. It's our field. Working from the gun, Wentz. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. Well, that was a big oops right there. But how about his ability to correct it? Loses the football, able to get it back himself. Yeah, pounced right back on it, keeps possession. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down to close to the goal line at the one-yard line. You rarely call your punter a weapon, but he certainly was there. How about that? Pinning him down at the one-yard line and helping out the defense in a big way. I'm telling you what, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I might be thinking safety right now. And they're going to get about three here out of this first down run, and that'll bring up second and seven. A gain of three, second down. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. They try again with Cohen. And they're able to corral him right around the eight, and that's short of the first down. It'll be a gain of five, and the punt team will now come out on fourth down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Rush comes, and they block it. It's picked up, and this is a live ball, remember are in for six. 
Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable. but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. Elliott now to add the extra point. It's up and good, and that makes it 17-3. Not only did they block it, the awareness to go and grab it and then take it into the end zone for six points. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 27. They'll start with a give to Cohen. He takes this for three to the 29. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now Trubisky to throw. And this is Gabriel on the catch. And he's going to be taken down here still a couple yards short of the first. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. They stopped him in his tracks. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Throwing his wins. It's caught by Aguilar, and they're able to get this one across the 35. 19 yards to pick up there, move the chains. I think it all came together there, in-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace, money throw right there to move the sticks. They'll run it with Sproles, and they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. If this defense wants to stay in this ballgame, they've got to start ending some drives. That helps. And they have to look ahead at what they expect the offense to do. And right now with that lead, that's run the football. So you don't just stack the line of scrimmage. You have to get upfield and try to make some plays in their backfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. He's obviously a bit of a shorter running back. Sometimes when he goes up the middle like that, he, he gets lost in there, and then he pops out for 10, 20 yards. I actually asked NFL linebackers if that was true. Do you actually lose sight of some of the smaller running backs? And all of them confirmed that that can be a problem. Think of it this way. Two of the top running backs in NFL history, Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, both 5'10".
So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Wentz defers to Clement. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in the second half. Instead, it's third down. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. On play action, they'll throw. Being chased out left. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Like how they've started the third quarter here. They force a punt on the first drive. And after this sack, it looks like they'll be forcing another one as well. Absolutely. Maybe got their second win coming out of the locker room. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Second and nine now from the 21. From the shotgun is Trubisky. Is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. Picked off by Rodney McLeod. Well, so much of playing quarterback in the snow comes down to trying not to do too much. You've got to just keep telling yourself, throws downfield, we've run every day in practice all year. But guess what? They suddenly become more difficult. And this one gets away from him and winds up an interception. carry for Donnell Pumphrey. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Go, go, go. 
Now wins. Eluding the pressure right. And that's complete to Jeffrey. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swing, slant, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Now a play fake. Wentz. That's going to be caught. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Dallas Goddard, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Eagles able to push further out in front. The big fellow was the recipient there for that touchdown pass, and it seems like more and more the tight end is the guy you have to worry about most in the passing game. Now Wentz going to lead the Eagles up to go for two. Wentz going to look to throw. Steps away. So unable to throw it in for two from the two. Let me ask you, as a former DB, what changes there around the goal line on a two-point conversion as far as how you're defending it? You just make sure you never back up and you never retreat. You establish yourself really on the line of scrimmage, put your heels on the goal line at worst. If they're going to throw the ball, make them throw it over your head because they're going to run out of space because of the back of the end zone. Never let a guy catch one in front of you. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Now Trubisky. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Brandon Graham, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. I remember throughout my career here in defensive coaches, I always say, guys, you've got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your... ears back time indeed and after that sack we just saw Trubisky and the Bears deal with a third and long now Trubisky on third and long and the hook up here to Allen Robinson the 40 and they finally do get him but not before he reaches the 27 a big play there on the catch and run 55 yards so that changes things in a big way. Now from all the way down inside the 30, here's first and 10. A running play on first down, and it turns into a fight just to get back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. Here's Trubisky. 
And he'll complete this one to Patterson. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. So they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. The Bears on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll try to run for it with Cohen. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. He needed a yard. That's what he got. And it's going to earn him a new set of downs. Play action. It's Trubisky. This one into the hands of Burton. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Trey Burton, his first touchdown on the year. And the Bears get a bit closer. The tight end position has always been dangerous, especially in the red zone, short field. But now even more so because these tight ends aren't necessarily the tight ends of old. They're the rocked up wide receivers who have a little bit more speed, way harder to cover than before. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shot at the 23-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Throwing on second down. Wentz caught by the tight end Ertz. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give them 14 on that one and a first down. Wentz now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards. So make it second and five. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. They go back to the ground, this time Clement. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. Now Wentz on third down. Goes underneath for Sproles. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. Move the chains. A gain of seven on third down. On first down, Clement. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Defense. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. A run on first down, but it's not going to get him much. Maybe a yard, and that's all. Buster Screen is able to bring him down. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Uh, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario. No, bottled up, fumble. It's out, it's loose. And this is picked up by the Bears. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. Partner, that would look like it was over. I mean, they had control, had the football, and the defense had to make a play in order to keep them in the game. That's exactly what they did. And now that door ajar, two-score game, so hold on here, not down in the fourth. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. 14 yards into Chicago, first down. Trubisky now, a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad, first and 10. Here's Trubisky to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Fletcher Cox make that now eight sacks for him on the season. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Trubisky will throw. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Matt Longacre, he's the one that drops in this go around and that pass rush getting strong here, back-to-back -back sacks. 
From the gun on third down, it's Trubisky. Robinson's got it. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. The Bears tried it on fourth down, unable to convert. And the Eagles are going to take over in great field position. They'll run on first down. Clement. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Now it's Sproles. And an alley to run. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Down under two minutes to go in this football game. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. A couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. A pretty nice work defensively there on the first down run as they hold him to a gain of a couple. And whistles and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. Now it's Clement. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. They're not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Wins to throw. Completes it to Aguilar. And he's taken down at the seven after a gain of seven. Now the Bears will use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. On second down, Clement. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. Check 13, check 13. Out, 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 out. 58 to Mike. 58 to Mike. I got him, I got him. What's this? 58, right over there, right over there. Yeah, yeah. Mike, 58, right? No, 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 no. What's this? They'll try and push it in with Gore. And he's in. Touchdown, Eagles. Frank Gore, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Eagles able to push further out in front. And for them, this train, it just keeps rolling, doesn't it? Well on their way to yet another victory. Yeah, it's almost a runaway, isn't it? And you just wonder how anyone can stop this. they got full momentum going, full confidence going. But it's not just their own confidence that is leading them. It's the lack of confidence against their... opponents now because they see them coming and think we've got no shot to beat this team and now they'll empty
empty the backfield here as they elect to go for two. Shotgun now for Wentz. And this is going to be caught. So add two more to the lead as they continue to pour it on here in the fourth. And the formula there on the two-point try, they go five wide, not even the option to hand the ball off. They got it. They tried to create space, and there isn't a whole lot of it there. For the defense, what you're trying to do is make sure that someone, if they're going to catch the ball, make them catch it. behind you because they run out of space with the back line but in this case the offense figured it out now after the touchdown here's Elliott on to kick it away this will be taken about the 12 and he'll get it up to about the 26 yard line just across the 25 at the line prepping for their next drive the Bears offense they've lost this one their offense has struggled do they try to put together something here at the end just to take in the next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in the game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Now it's Trubisky. And he's going to go down. They sack him back at the 42. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. He's got Burton here. They wound up getting nothing out of that second down completion. So now here's third and 10. So it's a victory here for the Philadelphia Eagles. And they were buoyed, Charles, by a big second half that put this one on ice. So you get the sense that whatever was said at halftime obviously hit home. I think it's a little bit more than that, though. Obviously, there are words that are said, and hey, come on, guys, we have to play better. But sometimes it's just sharpening your execution, sharpening your focus, and maybe doing the things you practiced all week without major adjustments, just doing them better. And that got it done in this one. So for Philadelphia, the win is their eighth on the year. And they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for Chicago, they'll fall to five and three with a loss. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.